Okay, great. Um, so basically, um, I haven't prepared anything for today. I'm so sorry. I was rather busy last week in a Crown Court case, which I think everybody knows about, where a jury came to the decision that we we had the legal right to stand on a DLR train at Canary Wharf to protest the climate emergency and the um, the um, the government's inaction and the the fault, the root cause of the um, the uh, economic system that we are part of. So um, that was really great news, and um, but and that shows how how right we are to protest, basically. So I mean, my my reason for um, acting with Interlake Britain are sort of twofold. Firstly, I think it's the Christian responsibility to be prophetic, that is, tell the truth about the seriousness of the situation, that we cannot leave it to our governments and business to do what is right, and that we have to tell the truth about the way the world, the, the direction the world is heading. And especially after the disaster of COP26, I think we, we know that even more, that um, we have to tell the truth about it, and that it is our Christian responsibility. Um, and also that telling the truth involves taking action that is not usual and not normal and may seem completely mad because we are in a completely mad situation. We are heading the system we are in and the government and everybody's just carrying on as normal and pretending that everything is fine when we know it is not. And what do we do? What is the right thing to do in that situation? I think it's past the point of of no of, of being you know of having a right thing to do in a way it's, it's beyond that um, and so as long as we stay non-violent um, I think doing something crazy like gluing yourself to the M25 is actually a reasonable response to the situation we are in and I think as Christians we should be telling that truth um, and allowing yourself to be arrested, putting yourself into a position where we might be arrested, um, taken to a police cell, cell, court and jail also tells the truth about how serious the situation is. Um, so that's two sort of reasons, telling the truth reasons and also because if we don't respond in a commensurate way to the situation, then I see it as walking on by on the other side of the road, which we are asked not to do by our Lord um, in a very, in that parable about the Good Samaritan that I find it difficult to get out of my head. And when I have tried for the last two decades to act on climate change in the ordinary way of doing so, in the legal way of doing so, and it has had as much, um, eff uh, you know, effect as, um, as, as it has, i.e. zero, um, then I think we have to do more, otherwise we are we are being bystanders to violence, um, and we are asked not to do that. Um, I think that's all I have to say, really. Um, so I don't know if people have questions or whether we pass straight on to Sue. What do you think? I think it might be helpful to hear Sue and then to ask questions of you both, partly because of the recording. It just makes it easier. Um, <clears throat> yes, I'm coming at this uh, through having signed up to CCA, which was in about 2017, I think. And I saw CCA as the way of being able to, through the Christian organization, to engage in the civil disobedience that I believed then and much more believe now to be required in, as Ruth says, this extreme situation that we find ourselves in. And I want to talk spiritually um, because this is the only 
forum that I can do this. I mean, I seem to go to endless IB meetings and all sorts of support groups and so forth, but what I'm going to say wouldn't make sense in those um, fora. For me, it's about keeping my eyes fixed on Jesus and particularly the Jesus that turned his face to Jerusalem uh, in, in the face of much effort on the part of his disciples to deter him from doing that. But for the joy that was set before him, he was prepared to endure the cross. And I believe that to be the calling of every Christian I think it's far removed from what the church sees itself as about right now and not much taken up in the pulpit in our congregations. But actually our calling is to walk in the way of the cross and to endure that for the joy that will be brought out of that both to our fellow human beings and most importantly to God himself and so it's a matter of obedience to me that to engage in so-called civil disobedience is what I believe is the deep obedience that I owe to God and nothing else matters that's the only motivation for me what comes out of this of course um, is, is really not my concern. My concern is to be obedient to what God is calling me to do. Um, out of it, God will make use of it, I believe. I believe God will make use of any stumbling efforts that I can make towards being obedient to his calling, walking in the footsteps of Jesus. And the particular calling, I think, that we have really also, which is not something that would be talked about much, even in church circles, is that it's a calling to make reparation. Um, what we have done to God's beautiful creation is beyond belief, really. And... I find it difficult to speak of this without lapsing into tears, really. But uh, mostly on my watch, being nearly 80, mostly on my watch, we have exploited, partly unknowingly, but mostly knowingly in the last 30 years or more, perhaps 50 years, I think we've been knowing what we've been doing, we have exploited this creation in a way that is beyond belief. We've elbowed out all the other species in the world, really, so that I gather that only um, about 1% of species are wild and nothing to do with serving the interests of humanity. Um, we know all the other awful things that have happened and we particularly hold, we particularly call out the fossil fuel industry. But I believe that we're given this opportunity. I see this as a really wonderful opportunity, this path that we're on of engaging in acts of civil disobedience, being arrested, taken to the police cells, taken to trial, and then being imprisoned, of making reparation for some of the, the evil that we have done, some of the sin in the world, that we, if you like, can join our tiny efforts to the the great and unique effort that was made by God himself. That might, might sound rather almost blasphemous, but I think that is the invitation to us as Christians. And we're very much in the minority, aren't we, as Christians? 
so that we are called beyond the business of planting flower meadows, much as I like flower meadows, <laughs> but we're called into something much more serious than that at the moment. And we can't, I think, make sense of this to even ourselves or to each other, and certainly not to the secular group of the other nine that are on trial uh, on Tuesday, the nine that were on trial a couple of weeks ago. It doesn't make sense. But out of this reality for us that comes from our faith, I think comes the strength to do it. Now, at the moment, this is a very tough time for us all. I think what we're realizing is that the first nine in prison now are finding life very tough indeed, much more so than they or we anticipated. And so we, second nine, are, are having to face up to the fact that this is not going to be a walk in the park in any way at all. And we can help each other enormously uh, in this, but at the moment, the, the, the kind of wavering and wobbliness that is around within our, <laughs> our community of IB um, on trial is, is quite a lot. And somehow we need our Christian faith to be able to stiffen us to do what has to be done. Now, this isn't at all easy, and um, Kate made the wonderful point in our high-risk uh, action group yesterday that one of the difficulties for us in general is that we have very little experience of suffering. And uh, uh, unlike other social movements like the uh, South African, the ANC fighting apartheid, the civil rights movement and the Indian uh, independence movement, etc. People were honed by suffering into stepping up to the plate that had to be stepped up to in those situations. It's quite different for us who've lived and do live such an easy life in the West apart from our individual sufferings of bereavement and illness and so forth, we do not face the suffering that the Global South now faces in terms of poverty, etc. Um, uh, we don't have that to fall back on. So getting into prison is a kind of culture shock, I think, that is going to be beyond what we're going to be able to cope with unless we can do it totally relying, totally dependent on the grace of God, giving us the courage to do it, giving us the courage to keep on keeping on, and especially giving us the courage and the vision to see the purpose of this, to see it in terms of the spiritual calling of reparation for the evil that has been done in the world and the particular evil that I, as a human being, have done in the world. And so I'm going to end my, um, if I have the guts to do it, I have to say, all this is dependent on God giving the courage to do these things, but I hope I'm going to end my statement on Tuesday by asking the court to give me the maximum prison sentence because of my own complicity in what has gone on. And I think that's the direction we need to go in as Christians, not the direction of asking for special pleading, of asking for lesser sentences, asking not to go to prison at all, perhaps, apologizing. No, 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 not that road. For the joy that was set before him, Jesus 
walk the way of the cross and our task is to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus apologize for our action in stepping up to the plate to face down the fossil fuel industry no 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 we must not do that but we pray and with your help and with the enormous support of Christians in the um, in the environmental movement that we will stay steadfast that we will not be deterred and that we will do what is asked of us.